Hey, it's Sarah, and I just want to tell you a little bit about how I do teletherapy, because that is probably the number one most frequently asked question I get is, how do you even do teletherapy? How do you do speech therapy over the computer? And I'm going to show you, I'm going to do a demo of the Zoom platform. Now, if you are aware of the Zoom platform, you know it's kind of like a webinar platform per se. It's a video conference conferencing platform. But what I like about Zoom is that it's got a whole lot of functionalities beyond just a plain video conferencing platform. A lot of people say to me, oh, do you do therapy over Skype? And what needs to be said to those people is that Skype is not HIPAA means is that their sensitive client information could be visible by others. And we don't want that to happen, and that's why Zoom is great. Uh, it is HIPAA compliant. Nobody's sensitive client information will be shared, and it's it's just a great website. I really love it. I, I really, it's not a website. It does have a website, but it's a like a, almost like a software you have to download. And I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate that with you today. So what that means is that I'll be sharing a dummy session um, and I want you to see what you think about it. Okay. Hey, it's Sarah. And so I'm back and I'm on the Zoom platform and I don't know how much you can necessarily see, but I'm having a speech therapy session with Piglet. Now Piglet can see um, me. And so I, the P Piglet can see not only anything I do, um, I can also model different things, which I do a lot of. Uh, I have to be super animated because that's one thing about being in, in for, for two reasons. First of all, you're always pretty animated when you're doing speech therapy. But now that I have a camera on myself, it's turned me into like a super animated person because now I realize that, especially when I first started, I realized how serious I was all the time. And now that I can actually see myself, I realize I need to be super overly positive. That's how it feels like to me, but to them it looks just like happy normal. Okay, so let's say I want to go ahead and share with Piglet something on a whiteboard. So the whiteboard feature is really cool because I can write anything on here. So let's say Piglet is practicing um, R words. I can just write it out right here. Um, and like I said, I do work in Spanish. So um, let's say Piglet is practicing raton. So I would talk, you know, we'd put all the words here and I can give access to Piglet to write on the screen too. Now, I normally don't do that in whiteboard because it is actually pretty tough to control this. If you've ever worked in like a paint, uh, Microsoft Paint, there used to be, um, and it's just like, whoa, you, the kids lose control here in, on the whiteboard. But for me, it's a great tool. One thing I did last week was take one word, for example, we used all different kinds of words, but one of the words that we used was a verb. And I put it in the middle of the screen, I put an oval around it, and we mapped out all the words that we could think of that are related to the word swim. So that's a increasing kids' vocab skills, and it's a super easy thing to do. And I also talk to them about how then they can talk about a theme at length and potentially write about it. So give them a nice prompt, a nice map of how the words are kind of related. With some of my older kids, I did this as well, but for like a word like um, swim, and we also did drawing, um, as in the verb draw, I talked about how you could take notes and put something underneath something and even further indent uh, an additional related thought that goes more with a related word versus draw. But again, I'm trying to give kids kind of something extra that might help them as they learn how to take notes as they get older. So that's the whiteboard feature. I, wh what I'll go ahead now and do is click out of the whiteboard, stop, share. Okay, so um, a lot of times I'm going back and forth between a share and then we're going back to this, talking blah, blah, blah. Um, 
I can share any PDF that I have. And if I had a disk drive in this computer, which I do not, if I did, and if I want to purchase one, if you have like a speech therapy disk got from Lingua Systems a long time ago, you can put that in there and use it because it'll come up as a PDF. So let me share a PDF that I created. Um, this is again for some really little kids and that's mostly what I work with, the really little kids. Early elementary school is the bulk of my caseload. So they're working on a lot of vocab skills. They're working on categorization, answering questions. So this is actually a, a smash mat. I almost said splat mash mat, but that works too. Typically, I made this for speech pathologists to laminate and then use with Play-Doh so that a kid could hit it, you know, smash the Play-Doh on um, a food you eat for breakfast. Um, but instead of having, for example, like, like Play-Doh, um, I can go ahead, whoops, it's kind of showing you the rest. I've got a sorting activity. I can say to kids, I want you to tell me all the red foods. And I can then go ahead and um, annotate right on this PDF. I can put a shape on it. So if I want to, um, you know, kind of play a game with them, I could pause the share so they don't see what I'm doing, which is another thing I do a lot. I pause the share so they maybe see the first picture and then I pause it while I get it ready. Um, so I could do some kind of disappearing game um, where we talk about um, what, what foods could be behind there. What's a red food um, that is very healthy? That kind of thing. It's really fun. Um, kids love this kind of thing. Also, so you can see I can do shapes. I can do um, semi-opaque shapes. I can do X's. Oops, where did that X go? I can do all different kinds of colors. One thing I, I do like to use the X's when I'm doing like something worksheet based, then we can put an X on things that we don't um, want. And I have an eraser, I can erase the whole thing. I can just erase my drawings. I can erase just their drawings. Um, I have control and uh, at any time then I could give them control in case they wanted to annotate on the screen. And I, I do often give them control when I'm working on an interactive website or an interactive PDF that when you click on something, you go to the next page. Um, but most of the time, typically I re retain control. Um, let's see, not in every session, not, not for all the kids, but considering their age and maturity, I do like to retain control. So, and then I wanna share for you a website, how I use websites um, in speech therapy. So I don't know if you know about Oh, Newsella, I think they, it also can be called News ELA. Um, this is a wonderful website that has a ton of current event articles that are at specific reading levels. So if you look over here, you can see that I could choose um, whichever reading level I feel like is appropriate for my student. And usually I typically choose for my students who are usually in, in special ed, a uh, grade level at least one beneath where they currently are so that we can have some ease with our reading and focus on speech therapy goals instead of trying to decode the whole time. But you can see that there are Spanish, like I said, I work in Spanish. It, there's a huge library of articles and they go back for a long time. I always click on the Spanish ones and um, I really do like this with older kids. So I can, let's say, um, Let's talk about cuánto tiempo toma creer un hábito. How long does it take to make a habit? Um, so this would be really interesting for kids. And I like this website because um, you have the ability to change the highlight color. So you could say, um, for example, let's say Piglet, since I'm supposed to be having speech therapy with you, Piglet. Piglet, I'm gonna make everything that I want you to say in purple. And then everything, let's say if there's a team, like a group member, and usually I do have groups of two, that's my preferred. And then I want uh, Pooh Bear to read everything in red. Um, so yeah, it's a great website. And I think there were some that come with WH questions, um, activities, but I personally don't always go to that. I just use what I have in front of me. 
So that's, I can build a speech therapy session um, around a website, a PDF, and usually how I plan my weeks is that I usually have one high um, activity planned and one low activity planned so that I can, I can kind of be ready for some of my easier um, kids that are on a lower level and need pretty easy inputs versus the older kids that are kind of working at more higher level things. So a smash mat would be more of like the easy. And then for my older students, we go on News Ella, News ELA, whatever, to see if they can answer some questions and talk about their opinion and use correct grammar. Um, so yeah, I hope that really helps you understand a little bit about how I do speech therapy on the computer like this. And um, I'd love it if you gave me some feedback about this. Please share this because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about um, using uh, the computer for speech therapy. You can see that it can be extremely um, interactive. And even though Piglet doesn't look super jazzed, a lot of kids just really, we've, we've re actually raised a generation of kids that consider themselves to be essentially digital natives. They love computers. I actually have pretty high engagement. And when I first started, I thought I'd have kids running away from the screen, but kids love screens. Whether it's good or bad, I don't have any trouble keeping the kids' attention. So yeah, uh, I'd love to hear if you have any other questions for me and I hope you have an awesome day. So thanks so much for tuning in. Please like this video, share it and subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate it. Have an awesome day.